page 26 of Strictly Straits 1. I want to hold up my paper piano here, and you may refer. Please uh, open up and turn to the page 26 with the blue box at the top. And it shows you, um, as I'm doing here with the piano keyboard, you have G, A, B, C. G is your open string. A is your first finger. B is finger three. C is finger four. And I was always the type of student that says, well, why are we skipping two? And if we were to play finger two, what would it sound like? And I want you to explore and do that. And I'll put a little sticker there. G, A, A sharp, B, C. It's a note that's not called for in the music here. It's a very simple music. Now, A sharp means higher than A. The same exact sound and note can be called B flat. Flat means lower than. So I'm going to be a bit different than the book and I'm going to play with finger two. And name the notes G, A, A sharp, B, C. And then I'm going to come back and call them B, C. C is finger four, B is finger three, B flat is two, A is one, and open is G. So you need to become familiar with the G string notes. All right, here is number one with no repeat. One, two, three, four. G, G, rest, rest, A, A, rest, rest, B, B, rest, rest, C, C, rest, C, C, rest, rest, B, B, rest, rest, A, A, rest, rest, G, G. Number two is the G major scale, and the little indications there, like a, a squared one and a pointed one, they show the interval of a whole step and a half step. And if you do have a piano, it would be very good, good to look at that and to see how some notes... The whole steps are separated by another note in between. G has the, the sharp or flat in between, and we're not playing that. We're going G, A, la, 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 instead of la, la, la. So the squared indication between G and A and A and B, they say, show a larger interval. B, C, B, C. You see there's nothing between the B and the C or between the F-sharp and G, their next door notes, it's called a half step. And so these little uh, signs here, the, uh, the pointed one is called a carrot. Those are very useful for us to visualize what we're going to hear and how we're going to finger. Because, as of course, the cello doesn't have a keyboard, it doesn't even have stripes on it to show you where the fingers go. You must use your ear and your knowledge of intervals. Here's number two, G major scale. One, two, three, four. G. Half step. Flat. And half step. Page twenty six, number three. No repeat. One and two and three, four. And of course, I'm not sure if you're playing along with no pause or if you're pausing and playing and resuming. For number four, I shall do the repeat because it has the first and second ending, which are different, and also because the book is attempting to teach you what does it mean when there's a piano and a slash and then a forte. It means to play the first time, the first dynamic indicated, which in this case is piano, and at the repeat, you do the second dynamic indicated. So in this instance, we're going to play the first time piano, and then we're going to repeat and play it forte. One, two, three. I'm using short bows and light pressure.
Measure one, two, three, four, five, of course, has that invitation or opportunity for you to move up and play C, C, D without using the open D string. And if you're watching, you may see that when I play the two C's in a row and measure four, five, measure five, I play the first one as we ordinarily do, finger four on C, and then I switch to two on C. I think that is more confident and clear, more in control than just sliding. I hope you practice both ways, that you practice sliding from four on C to four on D. substituting four, two, four, four on C, two on C, four on D, once more, four, two, four. All right, I'm afraid my video may be too long. I'm going to go ahead and skip to number six. One, two, three, four. Four.